Chalo Dilli. Onwards to Delhi. That was their battle cry. More than that, it was an expression of pain for a long sought after dream. A dream of freedom for India. Give me blood and I'll give you freedom, he had said. And from Singapore, on that overcast July day in 1943, the Azad Hind Fauj would begin its march to Delhi. They would reach Imphal, and for the first time, the Indian flag would flutter proudly in the Indian sky. Yet the moment of triumph would be fleeting. In the jungles of Burma, the forgotten army would make one last stand, and their dream was to shatter in the pain of defeat. More than half a century later, some of them returned. the Azad Hind expedition would retrace that historic march. This is the story of those who returned. Singapore, renamed Sayonan by the Japanese, was established as the supreme headquarters of the INA. I am confident that with the help of my countrymen in East Asia... Netaji's appeal for total mobilization resounded through the Malayan Peninsula and evoked a tremendous response. From Penang to Johor Bahru, Indians came forth by the thousands to volunteer. Malaya became the INA's principal recruiting ground for civilian volunteers, as thousands upon thousands began enlisting. It was from the grounds here, at the Royal Selangor Club in Kuala Lumpur, that Netaji gave his call to his fellow countrymen in Malaya. On the evening of the 5th of September, 1943, a 16-year-old girl, Janaki Thevar, arrived at the ground two hours early to get a good glimpse of the man she had read so much about in the newspaper. In August 1943, Nehita Ji Subhash Narbo arrived at this Flango Club Padang. So I was preparing myself to come here by 6 o'clock, but then you know, I had to leave the house at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I took my bicycle and paddled along, and from there I came right here along this road here, left my bicycle on the drain there. There was a drain there. I just pushed my bicycle into the drain. By then, there was crowds of people, thousands and thousands of people in this field, in this Maidan. And there, I'm waiting for them for Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose to arrive. At about 5 o'clock, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and his team of people arrived. As soon as he arrived, I was so happy to see him. I just didn't know what I was doing. I just chucked my bicycle left my bicycle and I was waiting for the moment. And then Subhash Chandra Bose was with the Colonel Lakshmi and a few other people on this, this place here. There was a big stage there, they were sitting down there. Then Netaji spoke about the Indians and what the Indians should do for their country for the, at that time, you see, for the motherland. That he wanted all the Indians, whoever were here to join the movement that is the INA Indian National Army and devote all their whatever they can for the country. Then they asked, he also asked them for whatever the things they could give, you see, he asked for money, cash or in kind. So I was just moved by that. By then, you see, they started shouting, in Kulab Jindabad, in Kulab Jindabad, Netaji Jindabad, Netaji Jindabad. And then the whole crowds, after I had said Netaji, everybody joined me and started shouting, Subhash Chandra Bose Jai, Subhash Chandra Bose Jai, Netaji Jai, Netaji Jindabad. Then at once, after he had said that he wanted people to give the contribution, 
So I just got out my bicycle and just took out my chain, took out my earrings and walked across the field and just handed over my earrings and my chain and my earrings to Subhash Chandra Bose and gave it to him. Her life was to change that evening. As she cycled home after the meeting, she resolved to enlist in the INA and fight for her motherland, a motherland she had never seen. Then I went back home in the bicycle. By then it was already dark, six or seven o'clock, I think. There was no light in the bicycle. And the policeman stopped me and said, why are you driving in the dark? He stopped me, I said, I cried. I cried to him, then he let me go. So I went home. As soon as I went home, I left my bicycle at the fence of the house, and then I went back and I washed my hair, thinking my parents won't, my mother won't be able to detect that my earrings was missing. So I went back and slept. Janaki believed that Captain Lakshmi was the only one who could help her. Through a friend of her father's, she prevailed upon Captain Lakshmi to come to her house and help convince her father. The next evening, about four or five o'clock, Colonel Lakshmi and a few others came to my house. And then I had prepared a big tea for them. Then I had already taken my form, you see. There was only, a, there was an age limit, you see, for young girls. So if I, I planned myself, if I, if I, this was the time, if I don't give my father to sign this form, he may not, he may change my mind, and his mind and would not allow me to join the regiment. So at once with the Dr. Lakshmi there, who was very cooperative with me and told my father, it's nice for your daughters to join, your daughter is wonderful. She can join the regiment and he must be very happy that she is joining the regiment for the cause of the country. Then my father said, okay, she can join. So what I did at once, I got the form, filled it and gave it to my father. My father said, keep it, I'll sign it. Said, no, father, please sign it now. He said, well, keep it later, keep it, but I still insisted on him signing. Then I managed to get him to sign, sign um, permission for me to join the regiment. As they strolled today over the manicured turf of the Selangor Club's cricket ground, they're overcome by a flood of memories. Little did they imagine then that this 16-year-old, who had lied about her age so that she could enlist, would go on to become second in command of the Rani Jhansi Regiment. Within five months of Netaji's arrival in Singapore, the revitalized INA had begun to move up towards Burma. And by December 1943, the INA's first division had reached Rangoon. The delta of the mighty Irrawaddy River is like a hydra-headed monster. The river flows into the Bay of Bengal through several mouths, on one of which lies the port town of Rangoon. Burma's most important commercial center for over 300 years and its capital since Burma fell to the British in 1885. The very name Rangoon is an anglicized corruption of the Burmese Yangon, which means end of dangers. The supreme command of the INA was transferred from Singapore to Rangoon in January 1944. This move in itself was momentous, for only a single border now separated the INA from India. Access to the eastern gates of Fortress India was within reach. Burma was to become the launching pad to mount the final offensive which would free India. The march of the Army of Liberation seemed unstoppable. Rangoon became, in a manner of speaking, an extension of the Indian struggle for independence, its farthest defining point. Today, this city is a mosaic of ancient, colonial and contemporary Burma.
nothing in Rangoon is as imposing as the glistening gold stupa of the Shwedagon Pagoda, which continues to dominate Rangoon, as perhaps no other single structure does in any other major city of the world. The Burmese believe that the soul of Rangoon resides in this massive bell-shaped pagoda that soars a clear hundred meters into the azure sky. Fittingly, when the INA's veterans retrace the route they took half a century ago, they first pay homage to the soul of the city that harbored their supreme headquarters during the war. As she walks around the Shwedagon today, Janaki Thevar recalls the days she and her comrades in the Rani Jhansi regiment spent here five decades ago, virtually in the shadow of this temple. She does not look upon her return today as a pilgrimage, but as the fulfillment of a promise, a promise she had made to herself half a century earlier. ourselves after training when we used to come back you know we used to come to this this temple every evening all the girls used to come here because we had nothing to do but just to come to the temple and pray for our success of achieving our goal to India and then we made a wish we used to come and hit the gong just before we were about to leave Netaji came to the camp and he said I'm afraid girls you all have to go back home things are not so good so you have to go back so with a very heavy heart we said we'll come back but my girls did want to come so they said they said, we don't want to go because we want to go and fight for India. One of them, then I came myself alone. I hit the gong and I said to myself, I will come back one day and I hit them. Now after 50 years, I'm coming back to this country. Which I feel very happy and proud. For a full 50 years, Janaki nursed that faith, that conviction. Now she feels vindicated. Shwedagon, she believes, called her back. Janke is not alone. The Burmese people share her faith too. It draws them to the temple long after the sun has set, and nothing lights the night sky but the gilded glow of the Shwedagon Pagoda. At first, everything seems as it always was, fixed and unchanging. But as the INA veterans move around the town, trying to locate the places and people of yesteryear, they begin to realize that Burma's apparent immutability is deceptive. Fifty years is a long time, and time does not stand still. Not even in Burma. The Kambe Recruitment Center, once teeming with activity, is now an abandoned scrapyard. The Kambe Railway Station, from where thousands of INA soldiers embarked for the front, stands revealed today as just another suburban station. 
slums have overrun the Golshala training grounds. The days spent here training for the march on Delhi can be retraced only in the mind's eye, through the prism of memory. As they rediscover the city, the veterans discover a memorial to a man who is referred to as the father of the nation, General Aung San. A friend and admirer of Netaji's, Aung San sought to adopt the same strategy, seeing in Britain's travails his country's opportunity, in Britain's enemy his country's ally. Commanding the Burmese National Army, he had helped the Japanese to defeat the British and then declared Burma independent. But he soon discovered that independence in a Japanese dispensation was a mirage. When the Allies began their attempt to regain Burma in 1945, Aung San and the Burmese National Army defected to the Allied side. Aung San was assassinated at the age of 37, just weeks before his final objective was achieved. Netaji and uh, General Aung San had established a very good relationship in Burma and uh, he had sent word secretly when the Burmese army defeat, decided to uh, break their relationship with the Japanese and to contact the British. So Netaji said, after all, the Burmese army is operating on their own side and they are independent to take whatever action they want to. But we are only using Burma as a stepping stone into going into India. So we must carry on our fight. And also, we would not like to desert the Japanese at this stage of the war. Only one request he made was that the Burmese army should not attack the INA, because there was no question of the INA attacking them, because our objective was India and nothing in Burma. And I must say that General Aung San, he kept his word, and all during the remaining of the campaign, the Burmese army never attacked the INA. As she pays homage to Aung San, father of the Burmese nation, Captain Lakshmi ruminates on the irony that today Aung San Suu Kyi, the daughter of the man who gave his life 50 years ago, so that his country may obtain freedom from foreign rule, should be engaged in a struggle to preserve that very freedom. But her adversaries are not foreigners. Aung San Suu Kyi has never forgotten that she is the daughter of Burma's national hero. There is a certain inevitability about the way she assumes her father's mantle, accepting her duty to serve as a symbol, an icon, the crystallization of a nation's hope, its longing, its need to breathe free. What the veterans are so eagerly looking for is the house that served as the INA's supreme headquarters and where Netaji also stayed for some time. Will it still be there? Is the question they ask themselves. This is Chama House, Netaji's office in olden days. Ormor was a child during the war, living on what was called Jamal Avenue. He recalls seeing many Indian soldiers in Rangoon and leads the veterans to a house where he remembers seeing Netaji. The veterans recognize the house, but this was just a house for the staff, not the supreme headquarters. Meher Onissa, now 69, has been living opposite this house for 65 years. Her father, Ibrahim Khan, was a close associate of General Shah Nawaz Khan. Memories of her first meeting with Netaji are still fresh in her mind. 
मेजर सलीम और सानिवास साहब ने यहाँ पर रहते थे सुभाष चंद्र बोस साहब तो कभी कभी वो आते थे और कुछ एक दो दिन रहते थे और अचानक एक दिन उनका तबीयत खराब हुआ उनको पेचिस हो गया था तो मेरे अब्बा ने कहा कि देखो नेताजी साहब का तबीयत खराब हुआ बेटी तो कुछ बना के भेजना है तो जी मैंने तो क्या कहा मूंग का दाल का खिचड़ी और पुदीना की चटनी और मैंने पीस के भेजे उन्होंने दो तीन दिन खाए खा के बहुत खुश हुआ और उनकी तबीयत भी अच्छा हुआ फिर उन्होंने एक चिट्ठी लिख के दिया है मुझे कि कटहार कच्चा कटहार की तरकारी का तो उन्होंने लिख के दिया तो मैं उसी तरह वो लिखा वही तरह उससे भर के भी मैं मसाला डाल के उनको पका के भेजा तो बहुत खुशी हुआ फिर मैंने एक दिन कटहार का कुछ भजिया बना के भेजा तो वो भी खा के बहुत खुशी हुआ तो फिर उन्होंने मेरे अब्बा को कहा कि लड़की को मेरे पास बुला के आओ तो मुझे लेके गया तो मुझे कहा कि तुम क्या मांगता मांगो ये मैंने कहा मैं कुछ नहीं मांगता आप अच्छा हो गया आपकी तबीयत तो मुझे बस है तो उन्होंने मुझे फूल का हार पहनाए थे फिर अचानक ऐसा हुआ कि लोग जाने का हुक्म हो गया चला गया शाहनिवास साहब और नेताजी साहब जाके कहा था कि हम जाके आप लोग को वापस कुछ भेजेगा खत तो मैं खत का इंतज़ार अब तक करते थे तो कोई खत नहीं है ना शाहनिवास साहब का आया ना नेताजी साहब का आया तो कुछ हम लोग को तो कुछ खबर ही नहीं मिला यहाँ पर मेजर सलीम शाहनिवास और बहुत सा सब लोग यहाँ रहते थे इसी बिल्डिंग में Meherunisa leads the veterans to what was once the supreme headquarters of the Azad Hind Fauj. Ek jagah par laaye hain neta ji upar baithte the. Ji. Aur isme Shahnawaz sahab baithte the, Mirza Saleem baithte the aur bahut sa sahab log bhi aap sab log baithte the. Aap ye niche kamra mein the. Niche kamra mein the. Ji. To Captain Yadav. Ji. This is like a homecoming. Ji. Stationed here during the INA stay in Burma he had many an occasion to observe Netaji from close quarters walking in this familiar courtyard he can feel all over again the courage resolution and high degree of motivation the INA had reached by the beginning of 1944 The moment of truth had arrived, and on the 3rd of February, 1944, the first guerrilla regiment under General Shahnawaz began its move to the frontiers of India. The march to Delhi had begun. जंगल घूमेंगे 